Hey, listen up. We got another episode of Wise Cracks. Featuring the crack man himself, Bill Krakenberger. And our co-host, John Orlando. Straight from Las Vegas. Wise Cracks is your ticket inside the world of sports betting. With tips, picks, special guests, and more. Only on WSN.com. Hey everybody, welcome back to the another episode of Wise Cracks. It's Thanksgiving week for Wise Cracks here. Uh, crack, uh, Thanksgiving. Are you a big Thanksgiving holiday guy? Oh, of course. You can see the Christmas tree behind me. I'm not even at my house, but I bought a tree for my buddy. I love it. Um, uh, I got to have uh, festive atmospheres. You know, uh, it's a big time for people that uh, you should definitely always, you were in sports betting business, but you should definitely always make time for this. It's very important to make time for the holidays, make time for Thanksgiving. Um, listen, we used to have in my house, my, my mother used to cook for a dozen people and we always had the football games on, of course, the TV with the volume off and had the Christmas music in the background though. So it was always, and then, you know, during, uh, you know, we, we actually watched the parade, the Macy's parade every year. We would have that on and the games came on, but we would also, you know, switch channels. They always had, it's a wonderful life on, or we had um, uh, a big holiday movie. Live it on. I think they show it every year. Wizard of Oz. Yeah. Even though it's not a Christmas movie or a holiday movie. Um, but yeah. So in my house, absolutely make that time uh, for your family and make sure, you know, you don't want the game on in the background when you guys are, sharing a meal and sharing family times that I only wish I can have again now that my parents aren't here. So uh, if you can learn anything off me, yeah, again, um, make sure you spend time with your family, real time, not time on your time when you want to watch sports in the background, and, you know, eat some turkey. That's not it. That's not yeah. what I'm talking about. Put the cell phone away. Yes. Right. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Um, yep. Yeah, I'm uh, Thanksgiving is probably my favorite of any holiday. Just um, I like the food. The, the, my days revolve around the food, Bill. Let's just be serious. Oh yeah. Um, oh, but yeah. yeah, I'm all about some turkey and mashed potatoes. You know, I eat I'm that gonna, on the I'm regular. Search. Yeah, I'm gonna search back a couple of years ago. My mother used to make an antipasta that was ridiculous for so many people at our table. It was crazy. But um, I, I just I should have had this pulled up here. I'm sorry. Oh, look at that! And there we go. Um, this is all stuff from Arthur Avenue in the Bronx, including the bread from, um, Adios bakery. And the, the, you could see the antipasta there. Oh, wow. How did you our, find that that fast? That was incredible. I just went back. I just scrolled back to 2016 and, uh, 2017 actually. And every single November I would take that photo. So, um, yeah, that, that's just a great, uh, you know, Thanksgiving and my mom and her sister, God bless them. My mom and her sister in the kitchen, you know, old yeah. school Italians cooking the stuff. And uh, it's just great, great memories. And, 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 and you know, it's, uh, hey, look at this. I can't believe I got these pictures here. The stuffed mushrooms and the, the stuffing, wow. the turkey and the potatoes. You're making me hungry. Uh, You're making you know, me hungry. There's the homemade cheesecakes. My mother used to make the Italian cheesecake. Wow. Uh, yeah, that, that, this, was, uh, this was special family times that I'll, you know, I get mad sometimes as the chestnuts. I, I get mad sometimes, John, um, upset sometimes thinking about, um, you know, how uh, I don't have those times anymore when my parents passed both in their late 60s, 68 and 69. And I kind of get upset at that. But, you know, uh, to be real honest with you, it's uh, something I should be upset at because I had something very unusual. I had 50 years straight, 50, 5-0. Every single Thanksgiving and Christmas spent with my parents on that day. That's for Christmas Eve was a big day. And Thanksgiving, 50 years straight. Many people in professions across the miles can't do stuff like that. I would fly back from Vegas every year. I've been living in Vegas now like 17 years. I would fly back to Vegas, from Vegas to, to, to Jersey every year and, and spend that time with my parents on yeah. Thanksgiving and turn back around and fly back a month later. So I'm very fortunate to have that. I have to think of those times. And for try sure. to live in the positive, which I normally do. I'm a pretty positive person. And fortunate yeah. that your parents were stayed married. That's rare. In, yeah, they were together. In these the whole, times, they were together. You know? that's incredible. Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. My old, my, old my uh, world parents. My mom can't really cook anymore. You know, she's got dementia. So last year, uh, I just needed to 
pick some food up from somewhere. You'll appreciate this. So I, uh, Piero's did a Thanksgiving uh, feast that you could go pick up. Oh, nice. But um, nice. I, I had to call Evan over there special because I was like, wait, no meatballs? He's like, no, it's just turkey stuffing. I'm like, I need meat. I need meatballs. Wow. So he made me some meatballs. <laughs> yeah. Evan, yeah. Evan is Evan, Evan Glussman. Friend, yeah. Son. Who owns the restaurant there? Right, the old school right. restaurant there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Good stuff. Yeah, it's good, good, g- good times. Uh, okay, so Crack, um, you were just at a pretty cool benefit for your, your buddy Teddy Atlas uh, recently, right? Oh, that was so, it was really nice. Yeah. Uh, every year they have the Dr. Theodore Atlas uh, Foundation, which is Teddy's father, who, who uh, he started a foundation for 25 years ago. And they raise money for people on Staten Island, underprivileged, under. Uh, people that are just poor, poor people, pantry, they, they do pantries for people, they feed people and, and uh, take people in and pay for things like wheelchairs and stuff when the insurance companies say no. Uh, it, it's, it's a great charity that I'm involved in every year. And, and uh, even during the, this COVID time, we, did, we had a nice turnout there. Evander Holyfield, um, I, again, I'm forgetting his name, a pretty big comedian actor. Help me out, John. Um- T- uh, Tracy, Tracy Morgan. Tracy Morgan. Tracy Morgan. Yeah. Tracy Morgan. Nice guy. Uh, not only that, Tracy Morgan went in his pocket and took out ten thousand dollars and gave it to it's incredible. To Teddy. It was yeah, really nice, really nice of him. Yeah. Um, but there was many, many more people in that. Many more celebrities, uh, you know, come every year. Um, Tony Danza, Phil Sims, and uh, the list goes on and on. Really oh wow! Cool Did you talk to Tony guy. Danza? He's a nice oh, guy. Tony Danza gave Tony Tony Danza gave me ten thousand dollars two years. Three years ago, three years ago, um, he bought my celebrity auction, uh, which was a auction that I put up for uh, a big weekend in Las Vegas to see Lady Gaga and first row seats and airfare and a suite and, you know, meals. Um, Tony Danza. Yeah, he he actually bought it, which it surprised me. Those celebrities come up there. They're on the day. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. They're on the stage and they don't have to buy anything. But sure. Tony Danza. Tony Danza, um, yeah, bought one for ten grand. Um, it was really nice. He's such a nice guy. What nice a guy. Yeah. So, yeah. Wow. Well, it was good. It was fun. Uh, that's awesome. The other big headline that we must talk about is uh, the MVP of the American League uh, was announced, and uh, Caesars Sportsbook lost almost a million dollars on the one future bet on who was going to win because Shohei Otani won the MVP. Uh, many think that that's the huge headline is that Caesars nearly lost a million dollars, but I'm going to tell you what the real headline is. The real headline is, is that Bill Krakenberger gave this out at 30 to one at the beginning of the year. That's the headline here. Bill Krakenberger. Yeah. yeah. Congrats. Oh, I, I did. I got a lot. I got a lot of people texting me and, and, uh, some people on Twitter, some of my crack wins guys actually saying thank you very much to cash and and yeah it, it's uh it's, it's the work that the team does to find this information out that that someone can actually be in the running look think about all the big names that are that are in the running for this for this MVP and and uh, to have this guy win for us uh, at, I got it at thirty point six nine almost thirty one to one when I bet it and uh, these guys got it as you know thirty to one shot. It came home big time for my guys, and I'm so happy. I'm more happy from them for them than I actually happy for myself. If that makes any sense. Yeah, I mean, I well knowing you, yeah, that makes total sense. Um, Bill, though, like really, I I, I want to beat this one to death because that is a huge play to give out, and um, it's easy like when it hits for someone to go like, oh well, yeah, of course, you know, after you see that the guy hits forty homers and he wins, you know, ten or eleven games or whatever whatever his record was pitching, and you know he was just this phenom hitting moonshots over the wall uh, this year. Yeah. It's easy when it gets announced to say, well, yeah, of course, Otani, but put it in perspective. That's up against just on his own team. That's up against Mike Trout. That's up against Judge from the Yankees. That's up against Stanton, assuming he's going to stay healthy for the year before the season starts, right? That's up against Vladimir Guerrero. That's up against a lot of big players that it's, yeah. you know, to, to after, you know, Monday morning after it's announced to go, well, yeah, of course, Otani, of course, I would have had that. Like, it's easy to say that, but if you really look at the list of who made that all-star team this year for the American League, yeah. like, props yeah. to you for calling that one out, man. That's a that's a really a huge Thanks. play you gave out. Thanks. Thanks. You know what else I'm rooting for? This, this is the Crack Wins mobile app. 
here. Uh, just to give you something I'm rooting for here. Uh, Tennessee Titans there, if you could see. We need them to win. Tennessee Titans to win the AFC 15 to 1. That's my next okay. I'm, uh, I'm rooting in there, which has is a that, good shot. Are they 15 to 1 currently, or was that beginning, no. beginning of the year? What are they now? Yeah. I don't know. Do you know? I actually don't know. Okay. To win the – I'll pull it up as we're yeah. talking. Though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, uh, yeah, so those futures are good. They're fun. They're fun to do, but you really – people don't like tying up a significant portion of their bankroll. Right. We always recommend tying up a little bit of money. And, uh, and, and you can have – it's fun, season-long season fun. Yeah. You know? so, now, um, on a, when you yeah. hit a bet like that, Bill, the degenerate gambler – Instantly goes. Why didn't I bet more <laughs> when it when it? Oh hits. yeah. Do you go through any of that or no? No, never. I, I by the way, I'm looking at circa uh, four to one now for Tennessee to win. Oh wow. The, the East, yeah, to win the, the AFC. So uh, plus four to one, and that's the best odds. So circa's always circa's always one in the sports books. You get really good odds. But going back to your question, no, I never. I'm never uh, one of those guys that were regretful that I didn't bet enough money down. You sometimes you say, oh, I should have seen that. Coming and uh, you know, so it does happen. I understand, but I'm not one of those guys that looks back and uh, with regret. Very rare. Yeah. Well, it, it's a perfect segue to talk about the Crack Wins app. Um, I mean, that's if that isn't living proof of why you guys need to download uh, the Crack Wins app or just go to CrackWins.com and sign up and start getting this guy's picks. I mean, you could have had Otani. I mean, that's an incredible thirty to one, man. That's a good hit. I mean, you throw 100 that's a hundred bucks on that, you 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 hit three grand basically six months later. It was the baseball season about six months long, seven months long, whatever it is. Yeah. Um, that's yeah. an incredible score. Uh, you know, yeah. so yeah, download the Crack Wins app, guys. It's on Apple. It's on Google Play. Or just go to crackwins.com. You can sign up right there um, and, and get in the winner's circle with Krakenberger because this guy's on fire, especially with college hoops still, right? College hoops. College hoops. Before started. we started the show today, We've, did you say there's 100 games today or something? Yeah, there's so many games, man. It's so hard to, uh, to for a bookmaker to get all these lines right. So we, we try to specialize on the sometimes the smaller schools, smaller divisions. And we've had, we've done great. We won almost about, just about every day of the college basketball season so far. Uh, very successful. Very happy to, we started out 29 and 18 uh, going into uh, yesterday, which we went three and one yesterday though, too. So yeah, so we're, 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 yeah. uh, Rolling along, rolling along. Really happy, really happy for my guys. It was funny before we started rolling today. You mentioned um, a game uh, with a school, Dixie State, and we were talking yeah. about. You were saying how you were like some of these places. I don't even know where they are. And Dixie State, yeah. we were guessing like, oh, it's in the south somewhere. But no, not not down south, right? No. Where, Dixie State no. is is where it was in. One of our producers told us <laughs> it's in like Salt Lake City yeah, in Utah. Salt, Saint, no, but maybe. St. George, George St. George, Utah. Yeah. Who knew? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Some of these, some of these schools are smaller schools. I don't know. You know, some of these schools I bet on, I couldn't even tell you that one. I thought was probably in the South somewhere, Texas even, or, 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 or the Bible belt and way wrong, but it isn't in Bible belt, but it's in the Northern Bible belt over there in Utah. Uh, so yeah, so it's been fun. It's been a good ride. Yeah. Good, good, stuff. Uh, good stuff. And then uh betting news and we'll get to WMSN.com in a second, but betting news, uh, New Jersey reports. I'm reading this here. 1 billion in sports betting handle for September, just Giant. the month of Giant. September. New Jersey <laughs> generates a billion dollars. This is, it's this is for something that was much. illegal up until yeah. when? <laughs> A year ago, uh, two th- May, May of 2018, when oh, Pabst three years ago, revealed. yeah, um, it's it's um, it re- then when Paps are reversed the decision, I should say, uh, it's been unbelievable. I, I I announced this. I told people this on action and on the Showtime docu series, and I told them this on 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 the Veasan show I do every week, Sirius Satellite Radio. I said that New Jersey is going to surpass Nevada. I just didn't know how fast it was going to be. I mean, it's just, but it makes sense though. You have, you know, you have New Jersey itself is a gambling state, New York, Pennsylvania, you know, Maryland, or these people all come into town on the weekends or whatever it may be. And plus the state, like I said, North Jersey is full of gamblers. Uh, th- this is, uh, even though they have gambling on their own, though, some of those jurisdictions now doesn't matter. People are still betting in New Jersey, giant volume, a lot of tax dollars being generated, hopefully going the right areas. And uh, uh, you wouldn't know so by looking at Atlantic City, though. It's just it's still just a mess. The, the town is a disaster. It really is. Uh, really? I, I, they, they, they haven't cleaned up this town. 
all the money that goes in to uh, uh, the coffers here. And uh, I blame the casinos. I blame the state. I blame the town. It, it, it's just, it's a, it's a mess. It's a mess still. So um, hopefully things uh, change a little bit. I want to, want to, want to show you something here, John, if I could take a photo right now. Okay. Let's see. Hopefully I freeze framed it. Yes. Driving on the Atlantic city expressway yesterday. Here's a little, Tony Orlando sign. Oh, on the expressway. Uh, where, where's yeah. that? Where's he going to be? I don't even nice, know. Nice that you, nice, it's nice that you follow your father's career. Yeah. All right, hold on. It, Let's see. Um, Bor- Borgata? No. Delete screenshot. This is oh, Res- gotta, resorts. Like, maybe it. resorts. It's at resorts. Resorts. On okay. December thirty first. This is oh New Year's New Eve. Year's Eve. <laughs> I didn't even know that? Oh yeah, sure. <laughs> I, don't, um, I can't keep job, I can't keep keep up with him, Bill. I can't keep up. Right, he's a right, moving target, right, right. Tony O. You know, but no, <laughs> wow. so yeah, so pretty cool. Yeah, well, hey, if you got uh, anyone that wants tickets, let me know, Bill. I know a guy. That's you know, right. yeah. Uh, uh, WSN dot com. Yes, talk to me. Uh, let's. I'm over there now, looking at some of the. Uh, you know, I love the sports betting news articles and and uh, the, the the future betting odds that are articles that are there. Uh, latest prediction nods news of course the all you can you can watch all the wisecracks episodes but the number one things that i see here are bonuses and this is going to be something brand new that, that i noticed today i haven't even announced yet typico sportsbook in new jersey through wsn.com has a 750 dollar risk free um, bet that you get when you sign up with typico typico is a brand new sportsbook also then you could sign up at Ocean Casino because I've already taken advantage of that bonus, but I just didn't know that WSN has it now. So uh, I, I don't know anywhere else you can get that one now. It stopped for a while. So looks like they're they're back in business, Typico. So, um, yeah, that's a, that's a good bonus. And, of course, the state guidelines there and the, the sports books, the bonuses are the reason why I go. One of the main reasons. The articles are amazing, though. Every day, brand new articles. But the bonuses are, are like I said, I'm in New Jersey now with this. Uh, Caesars, FanDuel, DraftKings, all given thousand dollar risk free. And BetMGM, they're all thousand dollar risk free bets. Uh, bet 365, points bet, another thousand. This typical is a new one. Uh, there's a couple I never heard here, uh, a couple of new places. Unibet, $500. Listen, WSN.com for all your gambling needs. Make sure you take advantage of these bonuses. It's a big part of what I do. All right, Crack, it's that time to bring on our guest. You know I'm super excited about this one because this guest does something that I don't do, which is win at poker. Uh, yeah, our, our guest today is Maria Ho with over $4 million in live tournament winnings, 63 WSOP caches, five final tables. I mean, the list goes on and on. None of those accolades apply to me. But Bill Krakenberger from the East Coast, welcome Maria Ho in studio. Hi, thanks cool. for having me. Hi. How are you? Thanks for being on. Yeah. Appreciate it. I'm doing all right. You know, we're at, we're at the tail end of the series, so ready to pack it up and go home. But yeah, it's been a good one. Yeah. Um, Where's home? Where's home at? Where are you going? Uh, Los Angeles, so not too far. Oh, okay. <laughs> so cool. How many events well, you, did you, you play in over this series? Yeah. I would say roughly about 25 to 30. I think that normally. Wow. I, I, well, it sounds like a lot, right? But normally I actually play more than that. Like, but there is some commentary gigs that I've also been doing that uh, coincide with the series, of course. So I haven't been able to play as many as I would normally like. There's about 88 or so events during the series. So, I mean, I, I've managed to hit up a few, but. When you play in something like the main event, and you bust out, is it, like, for me, it's tears, and mm-hmm. I'm mad, and every possible negative emotion. Do you go through that as well, or is it just another tournament for you? Yeah, I think I feel those emotions, but it also depends on when I get eliminated and how I get eliminated. You know, this year, I made it to the end of day three, and we were 100 players from being in the money, so that one probably stung a little bit more than, say, if I was out day one because I had aces against kings and somebody hit a king on me, you know? Right. So. And how soon after you bust out are you in the commentator booth? 
Um, so this year I did commentary probably two or three days after I got eliminated from the main. Um, but you know, there's been years when I did it the very next day and there's also been years where I've been eliminated and I will somehow muster enough heart to play a different tournament the very next day, which, you know, it's, it's hard to know if you're able to play your best coming off of the main because the structure is so different and the money that you're playing for is so much more significant that sometimes I think mentally people have a hard time kind of transitioning back into like, okay, well now I'm going to play, you know, this thousand dollar tournament and you know, I'm, I'm not able to win $8 million. So, um, but, uh, I usually try to get back in there. Maria, I have a question for you. So when you're in all these tournaments, do you have people that try to take pieces of you? Uh, obviously, you'd want to take pieces of someone that's a winning player. Or do you have like just one primary backer that doesn't let you swap pieces? Or or, or are you doing it yourself? I, I don't know the answer to that. Yeah, I've actually never had a backer for any tournaments or oh, cash wow. games that I've played. So I will occasionally sell pieces of myself to friends if it's, you know, a buy-in that's pretty high in terms of just being a good uh, bankroll manager. Um, you know, so I'll sell a little bit for stuff that's like $15,000 and up, but everything else I have oh, okay. all to myself and I will swap out pieces with friends. Um, obviously just, just to reduce the variance of course. Um, but primarily I'm not really selling. Good for you. Good for you. So you're, you're wearing one of those shirts walking around the World Series. No backer. Need. <laughs> I love it. God, good job. Good job. When you do sell a piece, do you, do you, is there a markup? Yeah, it depends on kind of who I sell to. I think if I sell it more on the open market, there's going to be a markup. But when I sell it to my friends, I just sell it to them, you know, at, sweat at with face. You, kinda. Yeah, because I want them to have the sweat. And because that's kind of what we, we do, you know, if they have a good piece one day and they want to, they'll sell it to me at face and we just kind of go back and forth and, and trade it that way. So it becomes fair. But, you know, there's sites nowadays where people can go and sell their action and people can buy it. And it would be, you know, just a complete stranger buying your action and you know i think a fair market price with some markup makes sense for stuff like that nobody buys my action nobody <laughs> <laughs> yeah they, they want it, marked yeah. down they're actually they're having like... a clearance sale right now <laughs> right. yeah like, there's well, okay. everything must go yeah <laughs> nothing um i i read uh our producers gave us some notes bill and i both didn't realize you were on american idol is that was, true as a yeah. singer? Yes. Really? Yes. I was wow. eight, 18. I auditioned. It was like season three of American Idol. Um, you know, I made it pretty far, but not, you know, like like to Hollywood. And, um, and it was like a really interesting experience. Like, obviously, it's... Wow. It's when you look back on just how big reality competition shows have gotten, you're right. like, oh, well, that I guess that was cool. But also I just did it because my sister wanted to try out and we went and tried out together. So so did you wow, ever cool. aspire to actually be a like a recording artist or is that is there still a passion there or no? Not really, just because that industry is so tough. Not that poker is right. not <laughs> tough in its own way, obviously, but I just don't think I could have another life in a career path that is so highly competitive and so kind of hard to succeed in. Um, I mean, in college, I sang in college musicals and I was in my acapella group, but wow. I think that's kind of where it ends. Like I'll do the, you know, occasional gig somewhere locally in LA with some like live music and whatever, but I'm not, I'm not trying to be a professional no. <laughs> entertainer. No. Maria, do you know the guy that's sitting next to you? His dad is the world famous Tony Orlando. If you ever heard of him, did you know that? She's too young. I did yeah. not know that, but I also regret okay. to say that I don't know who. Tony yeah, Orlando she's too is. young. I'm sorry. Your mom, well, he had a he had a giant <laughs> show on TV in the seventies, and like he had everyone, like you know, uh, friends with Sinatra, Elvis. He was on a couple of weeks ago. Uh, it, it was a real big show in the seventies with thirty-five million viewers a week when it was only three major stations. But yeah, wow. Tony Orlando. Amazing. Um, yeah. That, yeah, really. Did cool, your really where cool. were your parents in the seventies? Were they here in the states? No, uh, we came to the <clears throat> states in eighty seven. Okay, so yeah, I missed out well, on a lot of you know the song stuff. "Not Three Times." Do you know that song? It's been a couple movies or "Tie Yellow Ribbon." Nothing. I okay. feel like okay. if I heard it, you're it's too one young. Of those you're things, way too young. Yeah, but you should know. It's one of those know. things where if I heard it, I right. would probably recognize yeah, yeah. it, but probably don't sure. know That's the him. song yeah. title by name. Yeah. 
Yeah. How about the amazing race and deal or no deal? How did you get on those shows? I actually saw the deal or no deal. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Well, the amazing race, it was because there was a poker player, Jean Robert Ballant, who was on Survivor. Yep. And they thought that the poker player would make for interesting reality TV. And so they were wanting two female poker players to be on Amazing Race. And he was like, oh, I know Maria. She'd be great. And so we met with uh, oh, the great. casting director. We still had to go through the casting process. But, you know, she came, she taped us, and then she submitted it, basically. And um, so I think that it was just something that made sense for them from a casting perspective because they thought that we would probably be highly competitive and we would try really hard to figure out strategy and things like that. And they probably wanted somebody like that because up until then, I feel like reality shows before, you know, Annie Duke was on Celebrity Apprentice or things like that. I think people didn't realize, you know, that strong correlation that, oh, yeah, poker players would take a competition really seriously. And it would be interesting to kind of get inside their head and see how they approach it. Um, so that actually ended up starting, I feel like a, a whole slew of other poker players that came on and were on Survivor and, uh, Vanessa Russo was on Big Brother and things like that. So cool, yeah. cool, cool. And deal or no deal. Did you make any money? I was not the contestant on Deal or No Deal. Oh. I was actually okay. a special guest that they brought in to surprise the oh. contestant because... Yeah, she was a big fan of yours. Right. Yeah. She was like a big poker fan. So I oh, brought I in this briefcase that contained a deal from, you know, a, a buy-in for a big tournament sure. and all of these like perks, which of course she did not take that deal. And then afterwards, I kind of just sat there and was in her cheering section and tried to give her some tips because cool. Deal yeah. or No Deal is, you know, a strategy <clears throat> game and a lot of people go on there and they forget that and they take bad deals so I was like really insistent on making sure she didn't take a bad deal but and part of the deal yeah. that she could have taken was coaching from you too I want to say right didn't it include like a coaching session or something like that yeah and so even though she didn't take the deal I still ended up uh, showing up at her home game and um, giving her and her friends a lesson so that's so cool yeah they live in, in LA so it was easy but that's really cool cool, um, cool, cool. You, you mentioned bankroll management earlier, and that's a big thing that Bill preaches, obviously, being a big sports better. Um, how important, like, how often are you playing in tournaments throughout the year, like, when it's not WSOP? And do you play cash games, like, continually, like, in L.A. or wherever? Yeah, I think I'm still primarily a tournament player, but obviously the pandemic changed that because I'm not traveling all the time and I wasn't going from stop to stop like I normally would. So I did play some more cash games at that point, just, you know, at the local card room. But um, for me, I feel like I've been playing poker for 16 years now. And the main thing that I tell everybody when they're like so excited about being a professional is like, if you have bad bankroll management, you're not going to survive. And whether it's in tournaments, especially in tournaments, because the variance is so much higher in tournaments and you really need a lot of cushion to kind of sustain what could be potentially a really bad run. Um, but uh, I always tell people, they're like, oh, that sounds so fun. Like this, like, could I, I'll just show up and do this tomorrow. And I'm like, OK, but more important than being a skilled poker player is knowing how to manage your bankroll in a way that you are not, you know, that you're able to stay afloat throughout potentially, you know, the variance that's going to come along naturally with, you know, the sample size is just never going to get big enough for live tournaments where you can always realize your expected value. So because of that, I'm always telling people like, it's not as fun as you think. Like a lot of these poker players are not able to pay their rent, you know? Right. So like, uh, wow, that's a very open, <laughs> candid thing that John, that I wish more poker players would talk about, but uh, it would probably discourage a lot of the, the squares and which they call the donkeys coming in. So that's, that's uh, very nice of you. Very candid and open uh, to, to say that. And Bill, uh, Bill, you usually preach like 1% of your bankroll um, when you're betting on sports, right? Like, or one, one, to, one, one, one to three, one to two percent. Okay. Yeah. One to two. Yeah. What is it for? poker like is it or can you do, you do it like that or is it different i think for poker i would just say to people especially if they're trying to be a professional is a make sure that you have anywhere between you know nine months to a year of life expenses set aside and obviously that's just something that you don't play with whether you know i don't know how much that would be it would depend on everybody's you know own overhead costs and how much their rent is and all of that but that's super important to set aside and then in terms of 
distributing it between, you know, tournaments or cash games, I always just tell people to make sure that they have, you know, over 50 to 80 buy-ins for live cash games for the stakes that they're playing more is always highly suggested. Um, and then for tournaments, you know, I, I would never spend more than, I don't know what, about probably 1% on any given tournament, any given so, tournament. of my poker. Bingo. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Well, wow. I have a really good question, Maria. I am, um, I'm very humble, actually. I really don't say it, but normally, since we're talking about this, and I have someone like you on the show, um, I bet a lot of money on sports every weekend. I'm a pro- I'm a professional sports better. That's pretty much feared by most of the sports books. I've been thrown out of so many of them for winning. So people know me, and um, you know they see me go to a counter, and I'm betting you know tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands. Sometimes in the weekend, you know, I can bet three, four hundred thousand on the day. So what happens is though. I find being, um, and especially like you were on TV there, I did a Showtime show uh, for, for a year. Um, people ask to borrow money. It's so it's so bad. I, I get hit with it all the time. And to be honest with you, if someone asked to borrow 500 bucks or something that I know, or uh, it's so hard for me to say no. Uh, and plus, I'm soft. I'm really soft. But it's the reason why I'm owed seven figures, by the way. So um, it's a stupid thing. I, I, I can't say no to people. I, I, you know, uh, I'm trying to curb that, though. So I'm asking you, what do you do in that poker world? Uh, I'm sure you've been asked and I'm sure people owe you money. What's your uh, take on that? Yeah, it's hard, especially when, you know, like you said, you, you're at the cage and people will just walk up to you and people will come and rail your final table, like rail as in support and sweat your final table. And you won't know them at all. And of course you just think that they're being a nice passerby rooting you on. And then the second that you get eliminated and they know that you're getting a large cash payout, they will walk with you to the cage and ask (laughs) you for money. And so basically you're like, Oh, so you were just standing there for hours, not because you were just like rooting me on, but because you couldn't wait to like hit me up for, for a loan. Um, so it's hard to duck those people. I definitely still am good about saying no to those people. But of course, as you mentioned with friends, it's really hard to say no. And it's hard when it's in an environment where it's so open, how much money you're making. You're winning very publicly when you win. Exactly. Like people know, okay, well, let me see what, uh, on, on Hendon mob, but Maria just made a couple, (laughs) you know, hundred thousand dollars in this tournament. And then you start getting some texts and some phone calls. And then they also just approach it in a way where like, they think that the money that borrowing ten thousand dollars is is easy for you because you won a couple hundred thousand and they don't really understand everything that goes into you know I what if I I could have easily lost a couple hundred thousand dollars before I right. won this tournament you know so you know they don't fully understand that but it is really hard to say no but I try to have a really strict policy to not loan money to people in poker because unfortunately you never know where that's gonna go um, but. I yeah, with friends and family, if they need it for life expenses, you know, I definitely usually try to help people out. But when I loan it to a poker player, I mean, I know what it, they're right. going to do with it most likely. So I really try to steer clear of that. But definitely there's people out there that that this owe, blew me owe away. Me money. <laughs> I can't believe I can't, I can't. This blew me away, actually, Maria. Mm-hmm. I didn't expect I wasn't even talking about rail birds or I thought like <laughs> friends and family. You're saying people that you don't know <laughs> ask you for money? Yes. Uh, that, it's pretty that, crazy, right? That, that, crazy. Yeah. I, I, and know, and do they I'm, do they I'm take a, do they take the uh, tone of like they brought you the luck? Like so, like Yeah, sometimes. I brought you the luck. Those pocket aces I brought you. For sure. Sometimes <laughs> oh yeah, they'll be like yeah, they'll just be like, "Oh yeah, I was standing here for hours." And like I'm like <laughs> guilt tripping me into it. And they're not even asking me that much, right? They're asking me for like <laughs> They're like asking for like oh, a my 20 God. or something. Crack just dropped an <laughs> F bomb on the show. He's never like, a subtle F and a subtle F. I, I, I usually don't curse. I'm, Never. I'll be honest with you. Never. I'm, I'm a Bronx. Maria, you ever <laughs> see me around? I'm a, I'm a Bronx guy. I got a lot of guys around me. You have any problem with those guys? Just call me. I'll get them over there. To talk Great. To Thank these, you. These flea bags asking for. I can't believe that 
fleas are asking for money. I was meaning like friends. Right. Someone doesn't know you. Sweat in a tournament follows you to the cage. <laughs> Are you serious? John? And it's so easy to do over there. It's so easy to do over there because you're walking a hundred feet into the hallway and then right into the cashier, right? There's no like security. I mean, there's security, but it's not. Yeah. It's very easy to do it like is. to just follow someone like that. Yeah. Does it freak you out or no? It's it, a little. No, it does. But usually you can tell they're just like harmless. Right. You know what I mean? And, right. and if there were ever a situation where everyone I felt knows like, you. Yeah. I mean, you don't need to. There's plenty of people who got your back over yeah. there on any given day. And I just, that's why I really just don't take cash payouts for large sums, right? Like, I'm just going to take a check. I'm just going to take oh, a check. I'm like, glad you I'm just brought that up. With a backpack filled with money. You know? I'm glad you just brought that Very up. Good. So, when I saw the photo of the winner, uh, yes, I forgot, I already forgot his name, Korai. Korai. Kor yeah. um, mm -hmm. And you see like the, the 8 million or whatever, and he takes that photo. A, is that real cash? B, can he really take cash? If he wants to? A, it's like TV cash, I okay. believe. So, you know, it's like, yep, it's just paper in the middle. Yep. But B, could he actually take cash? Absolutely. He could take so up crazy. to the entire payout, usually. There's really no restrictions. It just depends on kind of people's preference. Like, I know someone who's won millions of dollars in the Bahamas, and they literally just took cash and... They had some problems at customs as they should. Right, I'm sure. Oh, yeah. But but that's the way they wanted their payout, you know. But in most cases, like with let's say the w, with the main event, it just gets wired into your yeah, account. Is that what yeah. happens? Yeah, like people can do combination of you know cash and and wire or right. chips and wire or whatever. But yeah, you'd take the wire, right, Bill? You'd get it wired. Listen, I was in the Dominican Republic and I won a hundred grand three years ago. And I just took the cash, not thinking much of it. I just took the cash and I went to the border and it was a disaster when I went to really? Fencen Customs. They they treated me like a stone criminal. And, um, you, you know, I, I, I'm probably not allowed to even say what happened at the end there. Um, you know what? I'm not going back there. I'll never be back to the Dominican Republic. <laughs> it's a shady, dirty country. They try to shake you down. That's right. Really? Trying to shake you down. Like the rail fleas. 5%. No, but this is the government, the government trying to shake you down. And it's been done multiple times in the Dominican Republic. So there's a hard rock Punta Cana there. Yeah. Uh, there's been robberies to and from the airport there. And I didn't think too much about it. And uh, so I, to, to take millions through um, the Bahamas, which is Bahamar, the Atlantis, I, I mean, I can imagine the stuff that goes on if you, uh, because it happened to me over a, a lousy hundred grand. So, did you have anyway. to pay the shakedown or no? No, no, okay. I'm not, not Bill Crackerberger. No, absolutely not. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm not paying it. I, listen, I was re fully ready to record. You know, I even, yeah, I even threatened them to the point where I have. You know, I said, listen, I have thirty five thousand Twitter followers. You want to put this on here for everybody? I was mad. I was really upset. Wow. Yeah. So, uh, anyway. All right, Maria, I have a question. I'm, I'm friends with Randall Emmett. Oh, okay. Hypothetically, <laughs> you're at the final table main event. Your chip stacks are even. Who's winning? Me, but I'm sure if you <laughs> ask Randall, he would say him, but that's, you know, that's Randall. I mean, the beauty of poker is this. On any given day, any person can beat anybody, but... I would say that if I played Randall in that exact scenario, heads up a hundred times, you know, majority of the time I would be winning, but you know, he could get lucky. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. <laughs> <laughs> is, is there a name in poker that you say to yourself like, wow, if I go heads up against him, even chip stack, this is, I got a lot of work in front of me or. Uh, yeah. There's a lot of like, you know, all of the top, 1% of poker players, that's how I would feel, right? Because I think that the edge that you have against a really skilled poker player is very, very minimal. So if you guys have even chip stacks and it's a good structure and it's something where it's very slow moving, so you have to play for a long time in order for, you know, a winner to emerge, those things are, are very, very tough to, you never know. It could be anybody's day for those because the best players in the world, their edges against the other good players are, are very, very small. So yeah, anybody who is considered a good elite top pro, I wouldn't want to be in that situation with, you know, there's a lot of easier people that you can find yourself heads up with in tournaments. Yeah. So, wow. This year I noticed Maria that I just looked today. 
Um, I, I follow Phil on Twitter and I've seen um, he is creeping up the leaderboard for, I guess, the World Series of Poker. Is that what it's called? The player of the year and on their standings. Uh, Josh Arier and him are one and two neck and neck, which are now uh, I, I know both of those guys. Um, uh, is, isn't that an amazing feat by Phil at his age? How good he still plays tournament poker. Wow. It's just so shocking to me. I don't know how he is to play um, when you're facing him at a table, but he was always, uh, you know, the big crybaby, I thought. And I wind up loving the guy after we brought him on the show. I, I brought him on because John knew him. John brought him on. And I actually wind up liking him a lot. Uh, we had some great back and back and forth rapport. And uh, but but it isn't it, what is it like to play someone like a Phil Hellman when they're talking they're, they're the things they're doing or or do they not really do it to someone like you and more kind of pick on the donkey squares or the newbies <laughs> to the game? Uh, no, Phil doesn't discriminate who he <laughs> berates. Uh, he's, oh. No, I've been, even on televised poker games, he's berated me and he's tried to tell me that he's going to trap me all the time, but he still hasn't really trapped me. Um, but you know, it's like the, one of those things where it's a part of his persona. And I think that sometimes people show up at the world series wanting that experience, like wanting the Phil Hellmuth experience of finding themselves at a table with someone like Phil and then beating Phil out of a pot and then having Phil berate them or, you know, like go off on them basically. And so I, I think some players look forward to that as a professional. I know other pros were, we just look at it as kind of his shtick now, you know, right. we're not really, we're not phased by it. We, we let him do his thing. You know, it's just <laughs> a part of, it's a part of playing against him. Um, but but to your point, though, Phil is actually a very nice guy. So nice, yeah, and and a very fun person. But uh, at the poker table, very very different. So yeah. cool. Wow. Well, this was a lot of fun. Thanks. Yeah. You uh, you, got, you have anything? Any last questions for for Maria? I had I had, and and this is all from the hip. I had no questions. I just I just figured I'd go with the flow here. Yeah. I really had. I, I love the uh, the the back and forth and learning a lot about a lot of things. The I know it probably sounds crazy to a lot of people, but the money thing was, I found to be amazing. Yeah. I mean, imagine that the people that you don't know asking you for money and, <laughs> and she made a great point that it's public. So it's public people, you know, you right. have to know because everyone knows who won what. Yeah. And it's when public in real time. Betting, yeah. yeah. Too. It's, real time. When, when it's I not even like a baseball player. Or, no one you know, knows. Yeah. Right. 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 So you know, the things uh, you have to face is there a hey, Maria, are there tournaments now? Uh, that you have planned other tournaments all over the, the United States or maybe even the world again, or are we still at a standstill? I, I mean, I think that for the most part, people are still now just kind of trying to run their tournaments in their local area as normal. But, you know, things get shut down sometimes and there's just really nothing we could do about it. So, I mean, most players, I think, are going to go back to traveling the tournament circuit as normal. Um, I probably won't be traveling quite as much, but, you know, even next month, there's going to be a big series at Bellagio, a, a World Poker Tour event, and they're still going to have that. So... For the most part, I think this industry has kind of returned to normal, but it's it's really not what it what it felt like it was before at the okay, moment. Okay, last but. last thing from me. What about online playing on these internet sites? Which I'm a very cynical person when it comes <laughs> to playing on the internet. Uh, I recommend no one play casino games on the internet. You're playing in cyberspace. I don't know what's going on. I need a real live dealer in front of me if I'm doing anything. Uh, I, I just I don't trust things. Online poker has had many scandals before about people cheating, mm -hmm. people seeing the other cards, big names. You got a guy like Russ Hamilton. These guys right. are big names that have, have known cheaters. What is your take on online poker? And do you do that uh, in your off time when you're when you're home? Yeah, I play some online. Obviously, our options are a little limited living in the States. It's not completely legalized. It's legal in a few states, Nevada being one of them, of course. So, you know, I will play on those sites. I think it's okay to have a healthy amount of skepticism when it comes to playing online, whether it's, you know, any other casino games or poker. Um it's okay when people tell me that they have a hard time trusting you playing online. And I, and I understand that. Um, but I think if you are with like a fully regulated site, you should feel very, very safe about that. And I think overall, it's not the same experience as playing live, but for most people, they actually enjoy 
kind of the comfortability of not necessarily being up against their opponents and, you know, sitting at a table. And for that, that brings more people to the game. So I, I like online for that reason, but I think the purest form of poker should still be played live. So. Well, I get ah, it. Very cool. Very cool. I, I just want to close with, you know, I've played poker for 20 years, like, you know, casual home games and then, you know, Hollywood Park one, two, you know, no limit, no sort of one, three, whatever, you know, mm -hmm. two, five once in a while. Um, and only in the last few years, I've tried to like start really getting more tournament experience and playing, you know, as much as I can in tournaments. The level of respect I have for anyone that does what you do. I don't know if people realize, and maybe it's different for you, but I probably think it probably even more so than me on the stress side of it. Like it is so stressful making these decisions that, you know, like you said earlier, like you play in the main event and there's millions of dollars online, or even if you play, you know, some of these daily tournaments over at, at Encore can be 34,000, you know, for up top, you know, for 200 or 400 bucks, whatever it is. And, um, making those decisions and, and then the, the roller coaster ride of going from like, in my case, chip leader at my table, like all day to busted right after dinner or right before dinner or whatever, like I have nothing but respect for people that do what you do because it really is so impressive. Um, like when I, to read like your, you know, that many caches and like, it, it's incredible. So just nothing but respect to you. Thank you. Yeah. I appreciate that. Yeah. It's not, Maria, it's I have not all fun. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I have another one that, that uh, a question just came up to me. Spon just thought about it spontaneously. So I had very old fashioned parents. Uh, my mother, God bless her. She was Italian. Her parents came from Italy, didn't speak English. Same thing on the other side. My father, Hungarian, came to this country, didn't speak. We spoke Hungarian in our house when we were kids, uh, actually, my, my grandfather. So they found my profession to be very dangerous. My mom and dad were like, oh, my God, you have to get a job. You can't be doing this stuff. Uh, you know, my, my mother was very scared. My father, too. They're very scared of what I was doing. Until, um, you know, until I paid their house off and stuff like that. I, I mean, they, they realized that I must be doing something right. And, and you know, um, but um, still, even in the end, before I lost my parents, they were still always scared and skeptical. I'm wondering if that was your family also. Did that happen with your parents or grandparents or someone in your family? A little bit worried in the beginning. Yeah, for sure. Because I, I, I also come from, you know, an immigrant family. So they also probably wanted me to take a much more conventional career path because that feels safe and they want to make sure that I'm going to be able to survive here and do well for myself. And I don't think poker really made sense, uh, in that regard, but, um, but you know, at some point they come around and they also realize that they can't control what I, what I do. And they were very worried about me just being in that environment, obviously all the time in the beginning, but I do think that that was something really important to me was when I started playing poker more and was a professional was I want to try to bring poker kind of out of that, like that, that back alley type yeah. feel that some people might see poker in the, the stigma that has surrounded poker or even, you know, being in a cas casino environment. I really wanted to change that because I wanted my parents to be more accepting, but to also to feel more comfortable with what I was doing. So that's always been something that I think I've been trying to do is just show kind of out in the mainstream how poker is really a skill game and it's really quite interesting and fascinating and there's really great people and great characters surrounding it. And of course, there's always a shady side of everything, but um, but I kind of want to hope that poker can be propped up in a similar way that chess is, you know what I yeah. mean? So, And I think a lot has changed over the last 20 years. Like I said to Phil Helmuth when he was on, like, you know, there wasn't, it wasn't that long ago when it was, you know, what Bill does, what you do is frowned upon. It's your degenerates, right? All the negative that came with it. But now in a lot of cases, you guys are rock stars. Like you're, you're, you're celebrities, like legit, you know, celebrities. I mean, it's, I think it's really swung in a really great direction, like over the last, you know, maybe 15, 20 years or spe but specifically even like maybe the last 10 years. 
Yeah, definitely. And I think that's a, that's why it's so important to be able to, you know, show poker on TV because I think that way people kind of understand that, okay, this is more of a skill game. These people are not just like gambling <laughs> their lives away. I mean, we're playing, you know, 12 hours a day for six, seven, eight days in order to win a tournament. There's obviously a, a like lot of strategy involved to yeah. get that far. So, yeah. And I, I also, cool. I also think, um, like maybe when you first started, you know, you were one of the good female players. And now I just feel like everyone just accept like, no, you're one of the good players, right? Like it's, I think that piece of it's changed too yeah. in the last few years. Yeah. Am I right? Or? I, for sure. Yeah. I, and I hope so, because obviously when you put poker up against other things, there's really no advantage or disadvantage for any gender, right? right. This is not a physical game. Um, so it doesn't really matter other than what's up here. So um, even though they sometimes like to separate out like the women from the men, there's really no reason to do that right. uh, in this game. So it's nice to know that there are more women playing and it's nice to know that more more women are being seen as being highly competitive just in general and not just when it comes to being a, for a woman, you know? Yeah. Well, so. thank you so much for coming by Wise Cracks yeah. today. It really meant a lot to us. And uh, Bill, any closing remark? Yeah. No, thank you very much, Maria. I really appreciate you. Great insight here. We covered a lot here in this 40 minutes. So I uh, appreciate you coming to the studio. Appreciate you coming on Wise Cracks. Thank you very much. Of course. Thanks for having me. It was fun. Man, that was great. What a nice, what a nice lady, huh? I really liked Maria Ho. Uh, what a classy lady to come in and spend some time with you there and and uh, talk to us and come into the studio and yeah. just be so blunt and revealing. And I, I love it, John. Thanks, thanks yeah. for uh, thanks to WSN. Thanks to you. I don't know who I don't even know who got this guy. Dylan. Whoever did. I think that was thanks. Dylan. Dylan. Yeah. All right, Dylan. Dylan's Dylan. pulling that's his the, weight. That's <laughs> our our. Uh, our, our seven figure producing staff. There you Those go. Make a lot of money and they're earning their money. Good job. Uh, Love it. All right, Bill, before we get out of here, it's time for our hot take segment. Are you ready? Oh, yes. I got, I've got a I'm question out. for you go here. All right. Uh, Bill, people talk about trap lines. Is that a real thing? Uh, you know, it's probably overblown like everything else, but there are certain situations. There are trap lines when a team, whenever you hear this in a sports book, oh my God. Look at this line. That's ridiculous. It's so easy. That's a trap line. Usually the other side is probably the right play. Um, but uh, it's a trap because it's going to get you in a trap. But guys like me and, and guys like my followers, it's going to get the other side of the game. Lots of times. Not, not all the time, but lots of times. Uh, we bet ugly teams. That's what I bet on. Ugly ducklings because they're getting <laughs> extra value. So there you go. I like it. That's uh, a good hot me, take. Now let me let me uh, go over to your hot take here. All right. Uh, what was the best knockout you've ever seen live? Bill, this is an easy one. This is an easy one. Of course, all roads always lead back to the king, Conor oh, McGregor. God. Yes, Conor McGregor, Bill. Don't don't make don't frown. Conor McGregor knocking out Jose Aldo in a title fight. I still believe it's the quickest knockout in UFC history in a title fight. Oh, wow. 13 seconds. And here's what makes wow. it really cool. He called it. He predicted it. Not only did he say he was going to knock Aldo out, who hadn't lost in about seven or eight years, he said he was going to knock him out. He even said how it was going to happen. He said Jose was going to overcommit uh, with throwing a punch. Connor was going to back up and then put him out with a left, and it's exactly what happened. He called the shot before it happened. Okay. Okay, calm down. I'm not a Connor guy. You know, I, I like a guy who was not out there like he is and doing the things he does. So I, I'm not. He's a bad. He's a bad example for life, for kids, for everything. So, I I don't oh, love uh, Connor 2.0. I will say that that um yeah. uh, his yeah. antics out of the cage uh, this past few years. Um, yeah, I wish he'd go back in the other direction for sure. Um, well, well, Bill, right, listen, uh, happy Thanksgiving Thanks again. Yeah. Happy Thanksgiving. You and your family. I'm probably going to give your dad a call for Thanksgiving. Please do. I talked to him. Oh, yeah. uh, real quick. So I talked to him yesterday, uh, and I said, have you talked to crack? And he said, no, I said, um, I said, oh, he said, well, I said, he got your message and he was so excited you called, but he told me he's never going to call you back because he doesn't want to bother you. He said, oh no, he says he didn't call me, but he texted me back, but tell him he can call me. So here I'm telling you oh, on the good. show, crack call Tony. Oh, it's good. okay. <laughs> All right. All right. All right. We'll see. Great you. job, guys. We'll see you next week.